that celebrate our risen Lord's resurrection by turning to hymn number of 358. Oops, that's not right. Or it is right. 358, and let's stand as we worship together. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. <coughs> a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face of certain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds a future. because he lives and then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's fine no war with pain and then as death gives way to Sunday, we praise the Lord, just like Romans chapter 1, verse 4 says, to be declared the Son of God with power by the Spirit of holiness through the resurrection of the dead. So because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, it proves that he is the Son of God. And so many people 
especially in our day and age, don't want to believe that. But we who believe it, we praise the Lord this morning because of the evidence of the sweet grace and tender mercies he continually gives us in a beautiful day. Uh, thank the Lord. And we had a good day yesterday in our uh, Easter egg hunt yesterday. We gave out 45 Bibles and children and tracts and other things. So we thank the Lord for we had a really a good day yesterday in getting out God's word. And also one other thing, uh, I want to thank everyone for all the hard work that they did, not only yesterday, but the hard work they've done for the last two three weeks and getting all this stuff and putting it in the bags and all the work that was done. There's so much work always done behind the scenes. I know I appreciate all the people that did so much. We really, and I usually don't say too much about that, but people just do it and I'm glad that uh, uh, I don't have to do that. People love doing it, serving the Lord, and we praise the Lord. And before I read from the Gospel of Mark, before we have a word of prayer, remember we need to say to set a date for our vacation Bible school. We haven't done that yet, so we need to be, people need to be thinking about that. Hopefully in a week or two, we will be doing that. I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, and I'll be preaching from the Gospel of Luke, and there's, they're not two different versions. There's some things added, but I want you to see how people reacted, and I'm talking about the, the disciples and other people with the resurrection because people want to still doubt it today. Mark chapter 16, I'll be reading the first 14 verses. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him. And as they mourned and wept, and when they had heard that he was alive, and they had seen and had been seen by her, they did not believe. They didn't believe it. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them, as they walked and went into the country, probably the two on Emmaus Road. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had, been seen, who had seen him after he had risen. And Jesus, starting in Matthew 16, spoke a number of times about his resurrection from the dead, that he would rise. And guess what? People had a hard time with it. Let's bow our heads as we come before our Lord in the word of prayer and praise. Almighty God, as we bow down before you, we acknowledge you not only as our God, our Lord, our Savior, our rock and fortress, our Redeemer, and all that you are, Lord Father. We sit and stand in your presence this morning, Lord Father, awed by your greatness, your awesomeness, your majesty, and all things belong to you because you're the creator of all things. Thank you for this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for this day that you've given to us to worship you, to praise you. And we thank you, Lord Father, for everyone here, that every heart here this morning will be touched, that your Holy Spirit will not only minister to us, but to all those people around about us that in our walk of life that need to know Jesus Christ. Just as that song we sing, people need the Lord. They still need him. 
to the day they die. Almighty God in our world needs Jesus. Bless this time as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. Let the joy of the Lord fill our hearts and our lives. In Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. chorus this morning. Let's turn to number 34. continue now with hymn number 367.
like him we rise. turn now for a responsive reading to number 364 and let's stand as we share in reading together. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. The Lord has risen. Jesus has risen indeed. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Death is swallowed up in victory. Christ has risen indeed. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The Lord has risen. Let's remain standing for our offertory hymn. This morning it's number 368. serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, He's always near. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King <coughs> the hope of all who seek him the help of all who find none other is so loving so good and kind he lives he lives Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, Christ in part. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives with Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, 
so good and kind. He lives, he lives, so Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here this Resurrection Sunday, Lord, praising the gift of your God, <clears throat> your Son, Jesus Christ, for us, Lord, who's risen again for us, Lord. Lord, as we collect this offering, allow me to use your name, Lord, to help our church, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. celebrating uh, God's faithfulness to some extent. His faithfulness to his promise through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He promises that he will make us his own. He promises that uh, we 
salvation, you are our hope for eternal life and long you are very hope of our very living. And so much I pray that you will accept this worship which was given for you. And then we are going to sing one more song as well. It goes like this. He gave me everything. He gave me everything. And that's why we praise him. And that's why we honor him. And that's why we will worship him. And that's why we give him everything. All that He came to live, live a perfect life. He came to be. He gave his everything Cause he gave his everything Live again in us He came to be Our conquering king and friend He came to heal And show the lost ones his love He came to go That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Cause he gave his everything. Cause he gave his everything. salvation and so oh Lord we come down with a sense of gratitude today to celebrate the salvation you yearn for us and that hope of eternal life which is there within us and so oh Lord we give you glory and honor in Jesus name we pray Amen
before our pastor comes with a Resurrection Sunday Monday, or Sunday sermon. Let's turn to 357. And when you get to the last verse, I'm going to ask that we stand for the last verse. Time of celebration, time of praising and giving thanks to God, for he is gracious and merciful. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. I'll be reading the first 12 verses, but really most of this chapter does deal with and dealing with, especially with Cleopas and his friend as they meet Jesus on the Emmaus Road. This is about the resurrection. People do it. Biblical times and the same thing today, but people just have a hard time believing that he rose from the dead. But scripture is very clear what it says about that day and who Jesus is. Amen. He has risen. Starting with Luke tw chapter 24, starting at verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. 
And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. He is risen. The people, even the, well, we see both in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, people had a hard time believing about the resurrection. And my first point is the people's expectation. Remember, this is within the week, last Sunday, preached from Matthew 21, Jesus' entrance as king into Jerusalem. And most of the people didn't believe that, that he was king. Because we will see when he stands before Pilate, what did Pilate do? He put a name above Jesus. He's king of the Jews. Religious leaders didn't believe he was king of the Jews. And the, the people, they mocked him as he hung there on the cross. But also, I want you to think, remember when John the Baptist was in prison in Matthew chapter 11 after a long period of time because John the Baptist had figured Jesus was going to bring judgment upon the religious leaders and everybody else, but Jesus was just preaching the gospel and doing miracles, and John the Baptist thought he should be doing something else. That's why when the disciples, his disciples came to him and he Asked his disciples, ask Jesus if he's the one, if there's one coming after him. Because of the expectations. And we even see in this story, in the resurrection story, I mean the expectations. The women came, they expected to find a body. Even though as it's declared in this gospel and the other gospels, that, that he would rise again from the dead. But they expected to find the body of Jesus to anoint him and do you know what, what was normal what everybody expected to do, and even in Peter. And when you look at the Gospel of Mark and this passage, when the, the men heard the stories, talking about the disciples, especially the apostles, they did not believe the story. They did not believe Jesus rose from the dead because just singing, it, not, this doesn't happen too many times. And Jesus resurrected Lazarus, and the little child. But outside of that, this you know we're talking about something that is not a common experience. But Jesus had predicted that. But they had trouble believing that because that just, that just doesn't happen. And people today in dealing with, and we also have to remember that the resurrection, and I'll get to it in my second point in dealing with the issue, that it is part of the gospel. It is something that you must believe. You can believe in the death of Christ, you can believe in his burial, but if you don't believe he's raised from the dead, you're not a born-again Christian. You can be something, I'm not sure what, but that is part of the gospel. And so not only Peter, but when you look at the story in the rest of Luke chapter uh, 24, look at verse 21, the two was on the road, Cleopas and, and his friend. It doesn't mention his name, but verse 21 and Jesus appears to them. And they say, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. They thought Jesus was going to be the one to do this. But remember, redemption was to pay the price. That's what all this is. That's why this is so important. That's why it's tied to the Passover lamb. It's tied to the story of Egypt, what happened there thousands of years ago. And what Jesus was doing now in dealing with the Passover and his death on the cross, they thought he was the one, but they kind of had trouble now because he's dead. And this is the third day, and they hadn't seen him. So guess what happened? Just what happens to all the people. And even to us as Christians, when God puts us into a place or sends us somewhere or to talk to somebody or to do something, or when dealing with the walk of faith, what eventually happens is, Sometimes that doubt arises. Should I be doing this? Should I go to Bible school? Should I go to seminary? Should I do this? Should I do that? And all of a sudden, in dealing with your faith, and then the fear arises, and that's what's happened to Cleopas and his friend. And Jesus said, oh, you slow. In verse 25, he said, man, 
Oh, foolish one, just slow of heart. They were believing and then it didn't happen according to their expectations. And everybody within Christianity and outside of Christianity has expectations of life. And in the realm of Christianity, we expect Jesus to deliver on his promises and on and on. But what happens is, what did he exactly promise? And that becomes a problem for people. But what happens to Cleopas and his friends in verse 25 there, he says, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. That's why, especially last Sunday, well, I do this all the time, but on Good Friday and today, in dealing with the Old Testament and the prophets spoke of Jesus or the Messiah, the one who's going to come and all that he was going to do and doing and that he was going to be the redeemer, the one to pay the price. Because without redemption, and that is a very important biblical word, and a lot of people don't like that anymore, but it's dealing with the one who's to pay the price. He says, to believe ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter in his glory? And, and really, when we have doubts and things don't go our way in our plans, because in my second point, it's about Jesus' predictions. But I want you to even look at Peter. And flip in your Bibles, keep your fingers here, but in Matthew chapter 16. And this is, this is in a way, a remarkable story, only in the sense of because how fast, this, this shows you how fast it can happen. You can listen to the devil. It is remarkable how fast. Remember Peter the apostle, and he just gives a great testimony. Peter does in the, earlier where he says you are the Christ the son of the living God he just gives that testimony verse 17 Jesus says man you're blessed Peter and then when Jesus tells him well I've got to go to Jerusalem I got to suffer and die guess what Peter does he did like Martha remember Martha Mary's sister she told Jesus what to do just think Peter gave a testimony within the minute it takes about a minute. He gave the testimony that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And then when you get to these verses down here in verse 22, Peter is telling Jesus what to do and what's not going to do. How do you tell the son of God what he's not going to do? And then what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. One minute he's praising God. Jesus calls him blessed. He's saying the things of God and what God had revealed to him within the minute. You can read these verses within a minute. All of a sudden, he's listening to Satan. And I want you to think about this because this deals eventually with who Christ is, what the cross, the crucifixion, his death on the cross for our sins, and that's the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, according to the scriptures. That's 1 Corinthians 15. He was buried, and on the third day he rose, according to the scripture. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. And Peter saying, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Just think, it's remarkable people trying to tell Jesus what to do. And sometimes we are that way too, aren't we? We don't want to do what he says or what he asks of us. Remember that song we just sang? That, that was the words that were up there? He gave it all? Do you know as Christians, that's what God expects of us? Following Jesus? He expects us to give it us all. All that we have. And some days it is hard. Some days it is difficult. And situations that don't add up the way we think they should add up. And our expectations, guess what? They kind of fall short. But God still expects us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. And all this, with Jesus going to the cross, what did Peter do? He said, oh, no, no. But Jesus had to go to the cross because this deals with the Passover. Remember, this, was, this past week was Passover week. If you watched any news at all, not even programmed, but you saw on the news that a number of programs had 
uh, in dealing with, with the, the Jewish celebration of the Passover and the things that they do. And I talked about the Passover Friday because that's an ordained holiday by God, but it also was the day that Jesus Christ, that Passover lamb. Remember, that's what Nathaniel said. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that's what's so important about it, that this because it is not only tied, it goes back to the Exodus. And what God did there in the Exodus and the crossing of the Red Sea, but before that, the ten plagues. I hope you realize and know that every plague was against the God of Egypt. God was showing who was God. Not the Egyptian and their gods and any other, not the Jehovah Witness God and anybody else that has other gods today. Jesus alone is God. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Any individual, tribe, nation, people, whatever, they will all bow down before him eventually. If they haven't done it today, you will eventually do that because he is King of kings and Lord of lords. So as the Passover is tied, and Christ is our Passover, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. This ties Jesus to the Old Testament, to the crossing of the Red Sea. So when we even, we're not celebrating it this morning, but the Lord's Supper, we celebrate his death. Because he died on the cross for our sins, he paid the price. Redemption means ransom, that without the paying of the price, there would be no forgiveness of sins. That's why his blood is so precious. That's why Jesus will always be relevant. Because it is only by his blood that our sins could be taken away. And our world definitely don't understand that. And there are churches that don't understand that. It's by the grace of God that we are saved. It's by his grace, our faith through grace. Believing that Jesus Christ, guess what, on the cross. He's our redeemer, the Passover. That's why I put in under number two there, eternal redemption. Because that's what Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 says. Eternal redemption. He paid a price. What's that famous word? And then we mentioned it this morning. It's finished. It means done. Guess what? We have the new covenant. The old one is passing away. In fact, the old one is, is gone. People do like going back to the old covenant, but Jesus made the new covenant. And just guess what? For the rest of history... There's not going to be another covenant, the new covenant, because it depends upon Jesus Christ, who he is, and what he has done. And this is why it's so important as we celebrate this, as we celebrate this morning, man, we are in the new covenant. We are dedicated to him. He has dedicated himself to us, as Benny spoken this morning, and a number of times I've heard it from most of you, the promises that God has made to us. Think about it. One of the promises he has made because Jesus Christ paid the price. Our Redeemer, the Passover, that lamb. Before the foundations of the world, God had this all planned out. He paid the price. So guess what? We have forgiveness of sins. That's a promise. Man, we have forgiveness of sins. Man, our lost world, you look, look, just our country. Our country is so messed up anymore, it definitely needs Jesus. If people would humble themselves, and it looks like it's just getting from worse to worse. I mean, just about every day on the news, it just, it, it's so depressing at times. But you know what? People need the Lord. They need the blood of Jesus Christ to take away their sins. They're looking for everything else under the sun. But Jesus' blood is the only thing. That's why Peter says it's the precious blood can take away their sins. The forgiveness of sins. And just think, the, next, the other thing, there's a number of things that he promised. He promised that the Holy Spirit would come. When we accept by faith Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and our lives to take up residence. The word of God, the holy word of God purifies us and allows the Holy Spirit to come. Remember, he doesn't go in places where sin. That's why Jesus, when he was on the cross, the burden of the weight of all the sins of the world,
Plus the wrath of God was on Jesus. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because God couldn't look on sin. And just individually, that's why the blood of Jesus is so important to us. But we have the Holy Spirit. A third thing it promised in Romans, and I quoted this at the beginning of the service, Romans chapter 1, verse 4, declared to be the Son of God with power through the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection of the dead. That's why we celebrate, because man is the victory over death. And the Bible is very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, and that's a long chapter, but the promise, the sting of death, where is it? Because we know that this isn't the end. And I, I'm not like watching some of these science programs. I'm talking about in dealing with the stars and the creation. And, but most of those astrophysicists and the, the smart people of the world, they really do not believe that God created all this. They also do not believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But when you look at the world, it is. It is awesome. And think of the, the it, I mean, it's trillions of light years away, all these planets and all that God... You, I have a hard time believing how, how expanse the, the universe is. And God has, he controls everything. I want you to think, every grain of sand, every dirt on any planet, God controls. How does he do it? I do not know, but that's how awesome he is. But in that, by the resurrection of, from the dead, Jesus Christ declared to be the Son of God. And there are definitely many religions today will not believe that. And to believe in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. The gospel, that he died on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the dead. He was buried and rose again on the third day. According to the scriptures, the scriptures speak forth of and the power of the resurrection in our lives. And lastly, the thing I'm going to talk about this morning is because he rose from the dead, that means that God the Father accepted his sacrifice on the sin, for our sins. Remember when we went through the book of Leviticus last year? Remember all the different sacrifices? The sacrifice had to be unblemished. Had to be near perfect. Jesus Christ fit that bill. Never sinned. People have trouble with that, too, that believing in Jesus as a child never sinned. Scripture is very clear, he never sinned. But as that sacrifice, I want you to think, if you offered, that's where when you get in the book of Malachi toward the New Testament, they were often 400 years before the time of Christ, they were often sacrifices that were sick, that were lame, that were filled with blemishes. And he, and he says, go, go offer those to your governor. Go offer those to, they're, they're not going to accept them. If the sacrifice is not unblemished and meets the requirements, God will not accept it. Just think, if you were in that long line in the Old Testament and you had your animal and you're waiting to sacrifice it and it was unblemished, guess what? That means you wasted your time. God didn't accept it. It had to fit the bill. Jesus Christ fit the bill. God accepted his sacrifice by raising his son from the dead. And that, I mean, there are many more promises that God has spoken about. And that's why we celebrate this day. We give thanks to this day, Resurrection Sunday, because not only is he alive, but we are alive in Christ. The living hope, and that's from 1 Peter chapter 1, we have a living hope because the word of God is a living word. That's what the New Testament says, a living word. It's alive and it produces life. Being born again. Born again by that precious blood. And as we'd given out those Bibles yesterday, I hope you've been going to pray that the word of God will minister to those, to those children. If any of them don't know Jesus, that word that was planted yesterday, that there will be a harvest. That it will sprout forth eternal life. And only God can do that. His living word. That's why we're here this morning, praising God, singing of the resurrection. He is risen because he is Lord and he is king. And just think, he controls today. He controls all of life. 
Our country does seem out of control, but you know what? It's God's plan. He does have a timepiece. That's how he works all these things. He hasn't told me when he's coming back or when he's sending his son. But you know what? He is coming back because that's what all this is tied together with, that there will be a day. It seems like it's going to be, have to be pretty soon because it's, it's gone from bad to worse, and it's hard to think of what's going to come after worse, but it is until he comes back. We can live for him. We can praise him. We can glorify him. We can share the good news. We can minister to people. We can help people, man. And we do have a great victory in Jesus Christ, and it is. I'm going to ask Brother Dan to come forward this morning and turn in your hymnals to number 353. We're going to sing all three verses. And uh, victory in Jesus. And I want us to stand, and as uh, we close the services this morning, we have a great victory because of Jesus Christ. Stand as we sing 353. I heard an old Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his precious floods appealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, Come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and gave to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory 
beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, 